An unmanned reconnaissance drone takes off from Sicily to survey the damage done by American missiles and bombs. You can see the scar damage from the, uh, from the hardened aircraft shelters, one of which we've blown up here that is actually flattened. Since the assault began on Saturday, U.S. and British warships have launched 124 cruise missiles and sent three B-2 stealth bombers flying nonstop from the U.S. We judge these strikes to have been very effective in significantly degrading the regi regime's air defense capability. The aim was to enable U.S. and allied planes to enforce a no-fly zone over Libya without having to worry about ground fire. In the first certainly 24 hours of operations, uh, we've been able to effectively establish the no-fly zone. We've got actually French airplanes over Benghazi as we speak. Uh, and we'll be able to do that on a 24-7 basis. That clears the way for jet fighters flying off ships in the Mediterranean and bases in Italy to hunt for targets of opportunity on the ground, mainly Gaddafi's army units still trying to attack his opponents. If they are moving and advancing on to the uh, opposition forces into Libya, uh, yes, we will take them under attack. It's no contest between the world's greatest superpower and a third-rate military. But as the U.S. learned the hard way in Iraq, Getting off to a shock and awe start does not guarantee a successful ending. Gaddafi hasn't stayed in power for 42 years by accident. He's a thug, he's a cagey guy, he's a survivor, we know that. So it's difficult to know exactly how it comes out. It's not likely to end with Gaddafi being killed by an American bomb. The U.S. military insists he's not on the target list. Russ?